Today I will be undergoing a series of would you rather questions and based on the answers I select we will have a draft restriction. My friend actually saw my would you rather video was a big fan of it so he decided to come up with this idea and I am down. So let's go ahead and get started here. The first question is for your franchise do you draft a stud goalie? <laughs> Or an absolute sniper. I know goalies can steal games, but I still think it's more important to have a sniper. So I'm definitely going that route. If you have like a really solid defensive core and a mediocre goalie, I would say that's a pretty similar situation to having a stud goalie and having a not so great defensive core. So I will be going with the sniper. Let's find out what our first draft restriction is. It will be, oh, wait a minute. Now I'm confused how this works. Oh wait, never mind. I get it. So basically, from our selection, we either have to draft a brick wall <laughs> of a goalie or draft an absolute sniper. So yeah, I have to draft a sniper as our first pick. That should be easy enough. The next question, be a first rounder or a late round steal? I have my answer. Or maybe I don't. I was going to say a late round steal because if you're a steal, I kind of think that means you proved yourself. However, I think the situation this is going for is that you haven't played any NHL games yet. So you're either getting drafted in the first round or you're seen as a late round steal. I'm going to go with the first rounder because that means that, you know, a lot of teams were interested and I wasn't gonna make it to the late rounds. So there's my answer. Let's find out what we, oh, we got some statistics here. Draft a player with your opposite choice. Hmm, so I gotta draft a late round steal. Only 49% of players drafted actually make it to the NHL. Wow, that is, well, not that surprising really. But if you're drafted in the first round, you have a 90% chance, mm-hmm. Yeah, so. That's kind of why I chose what I did. Next question, what do we got here? Would you rather play for John Tortorella or Mike Babcock? I'm going with Torts all day long. This one is incredibly easy. Tortorella's a wild card. Sure, okay, I'll give you that. But I feel like the stories I've heard is that he does have the players' backs. And you know, I feel like most of the players I've heard talk about him actually enjoyed playing for him. I mean, that's very limited to interviews on spit and chiclets and stuff like that, but still. I don't think I've heard one good thing about playing for Mike Babcock. And, you know, just that evil scenario that he set up for Mitch Marner. Like, what are you doing? Another benefit of Torts is that he takes all the spotlight. So if he's having a media interview, something like that, who cares about the players? Just interview this guy. Because he might blow up, he might not. He might say something crazy, he might not. What do we got as our... Oh. Interesting. Okay. So I have to draft a player from... The Sabres, Coyotes, Flyers, Rangers, Lightning, Canucks, or the Blue Jackets. That's a pretty hefty amount. Black or white tape? Are we talking about the blade? If we're talking about the blade, then I'm going to go with black tape because of the whole, I still don't even know if it's real or not, but it hides the puck kind of thing from the goalie. It's harder for them to see where it's gonna be coming off the stick. I like to use white tape up near my glove, so I, think I'm gonna go with black tape. If I had to take a stick and do the top and bottom same color, I think I'd go with black. And now I have to draft a player from the Western Conference. All right, I could be wrong, but I think he said he made 10 so that the last 10 picks is just free for all. The depth is pretty much choose as you please, but the first 10 draft picks will be based on this. Left or right stick, I shoot right. So right, too easy. Gotta draft a lefty. Only 36%? Really? That's from 2017. I wonder what it's like now. It probably is still favoring left, I would imagine. I play hockey right. I swing a baseball bat right. Golf club right. I throw right. My left hand is essentially useless. Who would you rather fight, Ryan Reeves or Ty Domi? 
Oh, wow. Can I choose neither? Is that okay? I think regardless, I'm probably turtling. I think I'm gonna go with Ty. Just because Revo is a unit. I mean, Ty Domi can scrap. It'd be great to see these two go at it. Yeah, if I had to pick one of them, give me Domi. Draft a player with the corresponding height. Okay, so I have to draft someone who is less than 5'10". Tom Wilson, Brad Marchand, who would you rather be headhunted by? I think I know my answer pretty much right away again. You guys know that I'm a Capitals guy, so... Love me some Tom Wilson, whereas other teams absolutely despise him, I can imagine. In fact, I pretty much know. However, Tom is six foot two, I think, and definitely weighs more than Brad Marchand, so I'm gonna go with Brad. I feel like it would be brutal still to be headhunted, but I think I'm taking Brad here just out of these two. Draft a player from the country of your player's choice. Okay, so I will be drafting a Canadian player. Although, I'm pretty sure Tom Wilson's Canadian, is he not? We are getting near the end here. Win Lord Stanley or bite into gold. I actually put this in my thumbnail for the last Would You Rather video. I think I'm gonna go with the gold. As incredible as it would be to win the Stanley Cup, winning a gold medal at the Olympics, like, I just feel is, somehow one tier higher. You only get the chance once every four years and you know, you gotta make the team because in four years, a lot of players can come up and get better. Sometimes you might only have one chance. Obviously either would be absolutely insane and an unforgettable life experience, but I gotta go with gold on this one. So let's find out what we gotta do. Uh, okay, we gotta draft a EU player. Question number nine. Easy. The white jersey is the away jersey now for a reason, okay? I get why it used to be the home jersey. It's like, you know who the home team is. They're just wearing a white jersey, but they're never the nicest ones. It's always the colored jerseys, the team colors in full that are the best. Draft a player with number 51 or higher. Okay, I can do that. Potentially the last question. Oh, no, that was it. Did I miss one? Yeah, he themed the slides for like a team's color palette. So that was pretty cool. Okay, I guess there was only nine questions. So the first nine picks will have the restrictions and then beyond that, it is a free for all. So let's hop on 23 and make this happen. We have landed on NHL 23. It is time to find out which team we are drafting on behalf of. It is the Toronto Maple Leafs. Haven't had them in a minute. So the first pick is just draft a sniper. That one is easy. Actually, to be fair, for the most part, there's no real tough picks, which is nice. Owner mode, no thank you. Jabroni, no. Sorry. And I will turn all three of these off as well. Just fantasy draft and salary cap. Boom. This time around, it doesn't really matter what draft pick I get. I'm kind of hoping for one in the middle range for some reason, so I'll say 14. And we are drafting dead last. Love that for me. Matty Beneers, first rounder. a boy. I mean, he is a sniper. Would it be criminal to take Svechnikov or Kyle Connor right now? Patrick Kane is up here at 2.6 as well, which is very nice. But again, I just feel like I've drafted Ovi somewhat recently and Kane recently. Whereas these individuals here, Svech and Kyle Connor, not so much. Hmm. Connor's got the gold. We're going with Kyle. I got to find someone who is a late round steal. I wouldn't really say third is late. I would say five and beyond. How about that? Now I'm really glad that I took who I did because Kyle Connor's a left winger. Mark Stone's a right winger. Sixth round pick, baby. How about it? Next up is a team that Tortorella has coached and Hart fits in that category. 87 overall. There you go. It's so weird, like, immediately having another pick because I expect there to be some sort of simulation and kind of wait, but no. I need someone from the West, and I need a center. I also need defense, though. So maybe I should take Dewey over Copastar? Yeah, I'm gonna do it. Okay, let's go with Dewey. Next up, we need a lefty. I'm not a big fan of the 7 million, but I am a big fan of the gold. So you will be centering Kyle Connor and Mark Stone insane first line and now i must find someone who's under 510 so this is 
going to be the most difficult pick or will it so marchiso doesn't have abilities he did win the con smite though zuccarello's got two abilities he's also making a million more he's four years older let's go with the i feel like i've drafted him a lot recently we're going with zook who i also feel like has been taken quite a bit by me i was trying to find a canadian left-handed defenseman so they could play with dewey because we just need to draft someone who is canadian at this pick so Ryan Graves fits the bill. Let's make it happen. Only two draft restrictions remaining. I need to draft an EU-born player. You know what? I want our top four to be sick. So I'm going to take Essa Lindell to be our starting point of the second defensive pair. The last pick here needs to be jersey number 51 or higher. I'm kind of looking at centers right now, but maybe I shouldn't be. Any right-handed defenders with a high jersey number? Trevor Van Riemsdyk. No, I'll draft a forward. We do need a second line right winger, so I will be drafting David Perron. And with that, it has officially become a free-for-all. And I will start said free-for-all off with a 2.7 defenseman here in Zach Whitecloud. Definitely not ideal. Centers went really quick this time, it feels like. But I need to go for the 84 overall guy who's making 5.3. So Backland is joining the Leafs. Let's draft Eric Comrie to be our backup. Why, you may ask? I don't know. It is worth noting that we only have $14 million of cap to work with here. We still need our final defensive pair and several forwards, so gotta take some budget picks. Luke Shen, and then we just need a left-handed defender. Our decor is gonna be quite good. At least I think. Guess we'll find out very soon. Let's hope for some depth goal scoring from Phil the Thrill. And I'll take Shiri as well because 1.5. Need I say more? Just kidding, I'm taking Marcus Flano. Didn't see him there. He normally has the most fights or gets the most penalty minutes, so I'm in. I have long talked about drafting this man, and I never got around to it, but today is the day. Tanner Janot. We're gonna have Felino and Janot on the same team. Oh dear. He showed up in the Would You Rather. Let's get some Revo action. I'm just bringing him to the team that he recently signed with. We got 4.2. I need a centerman and I need a left-handed defenseman. 1.3 seems pretty good, but so does 1.085 at 82 overall. Again, a guy I've taken quite a few times, but I just can't say no. Unless he signs a bigger contract, in which case in NHL 24, I will likely be saying that. Or if his overall drops, but for now, very ideal. A left-handed defenseman making under 3 million. Or 3.1, I guess. I could take Geo. You know what? I will do that. Our draft is done. We're gonna win the Stanley Cup. That first line should have a lot of chemistry. After that, we'll see what happens. Hopefully the defense mesh well. Yeah. Okay, let's go put the lines together. I'm really down with this team, though. I feel like we should be able to go on a deep run. We've got toughness. We've got goal scoring. Our defensive core is quite solid. Okay, let me just do a preferred lines here. So it looks like we only have chemistry on the first line, which isn't a big problem. If I move Tanner up, we do get a plus one here, which is fairly tempting. But I don't know if I should. Is a plus one worth it? I mean, it is roll four lines, so they're all going to get ice time. Yeah. Let's do it. Defensively, we have Beautiful. Thank you. That is incredible. One, two, one. You lads have just made my day. I can't stop sneezing. I don't know if it's because fall is around and, you know, I'm looking out my window right now. I see a ton of leaves. Not looking forward to picking those up, so I'm probably just going to try to run over them with the lawnmower. Kyle Connor gets the most points with 87. 48 wins. I think we're going to be good. Hold on. I just want to go double check and make sure that it is everybody I drafted. I kind of look. Stone leading the way right now, point of game. Let's see here. Yeah, we should be okay. I don't know why. I just, for some reason, decided that I should triple check. And I think we are ready to rumble. So, never mind. Let's get back to it. Let's sim up to the trade deadline, even though there's no trades, so it doesn't matter. Well, I guess I was wrong about this team. We are 13, 13, and 1 at the moment. We're going to need a dramatic turnaround to have the kind of season I thought we were going to. Maybe we're just not good. I don't know what part of the team that would fall under, or maybe just in general, 
the player types and stuff don't click. We went on a pretty big winning streak there, which is huge because I was starting to get worried we might not even make the playoffs. I mean, it's still up for debate. Don't get me wrong, our playoff spot, not guaranteed. Fine, we'll enter the trade deadline and see who's available even though nothing's gonna happen. All right, Montour. That'd be great, but no. You know what, 34 wins at the trade deadline is really solid, so I take it back. We didn't have the best start, but definitely only uphill from there. It seems anyway. Let's start bringing home the dubs. We're at 42. Can we get to, what did I even say, 48? Which is kind of insane, but it's looking like a possibility here. Don't you dare win. No! We got 49 wins. That's probably the only time in history someone's been mad that their team got 49 wins. Also, we finished 8-2-0, but Montreal finished 9-1-0. Relax. Second in the division. We really needed to push some more games to OT. Because the Sabres had 11 overtime losses. It would, however, be the Jerks that win the President's Trophy with 109. They had McDubstep. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so that's enough. I'm kidding. We'll look at the whole team. Johnny Goudreau playing with McDavid. All right, that's enough. Hyman Couture and Kurashev. It's a good second line. Third line's fairly solid. They got Samuel Girard playing with Pi Trangelo. Shea, and they have a good defensive core as well. Their net mining situation is meh, but clearly it worked out for them. We would be 8th in the entire league. Let's find out which teams qualified. Okay, it didn't get too bad. It went to 18, which isn't ideal, but it's not as bad as we've seen. I'll tell you that for free. The Knights that are golden finished last. They had Rupe Hints playing with Tara Sancho and Palat. Burakovsky, Roslovic, and Okpozo. Allmark and Nett backed up by the Nervous Guy. Brodine and Pulock. This kind of surprises me a little bit. They also had Bunting. Playing with Stahl and Donato. Even their fourth line isn't bad. I have no idea what went on here. Should have fired your coach. That's all I'm going to say. Offense was not our strong suit. Connor had 71 points and led the team. 32 goals. Stone had 65. And then Kadri wasn't even above 60. Doughty had 52, which is... Fairly solid for a defenseman. I feel like we had to have good goalie stats then. Yeah, pretty solid. 9 12 to 84. A 257 for Comrie, who went 12 7 and 0 with a shutout. Barlamov would be the league leader this time with a 9 14 save percentage and 45 wins. Spencer Knight up there. What is he, like 85? Yep, 85 overall. Did well. Ranta with a 9 17. Very impressive. And over point a game, EK 65. Yeah, that checks out. Kale McCarr with 72. Same with Tapes. And then we also got Quinn Hughes up here with 70. So, some really high point getting defensemen this year. Your Art Ross winner. Not Rocket Richard though. Looks like Pasta might have that on lock. Unless I'm missing something. But 113. 60 hamburger helpers. 53 tucks. Was a plus 33. Sydney the Kidney moving mad. He had 109 and 79 helpers. Rocket Richard does, in fact, go to Pasta, who had 102, but 54 goals. He just beat out McDavid and Kane. Sebastian Ajo with a plus 42. That's pretty good. However, I would love to see, personally, the amount of fights. What do we got here? What? We have second, third, and fourth, but we don't have gold. Giovanni Smith, next draft. I will hopefully remember to take you. I finally got to know and he didn't lead. Revo would lead for Pims though. Just barely beating out Smith. Let's get a scouting report on our first round opponents, the Montreal Canadiens. Konechny playing with Chandler and Svechnikov. We almost took him. LeBanc, Trocek, and Tolvanen is a fairly solid second line. I've seen better, but I've definitely seen worse. Having Cop on the third line though, that's a little scary. Their defense isn't great. That explains it right there. Yep, there you go. Bucky must have been saving their bacon all year. I can only imagine anyway. Yeah, he did well. I feel like this should be an easy series for us, but I don't think it will. That's a good start though. 5-2. Nice. All right. That's okay. Let's see if we can win one more here. Nope, they made it a best of three. Can we please take the advantage in the best of three? Yes, we can. Will they push seven? They do. Come on, Leafs! It is winner-take-all here in the first round. 
between the Toronto Maple Leafs and the Montreal Canadiens. That is not a good start. Svechnikov buries one on Kata. Can somebody please do something on our team? Yes, Rodriguez. I'll take depth goal scoring. I don't care. However we get it, fine by me. And Marchman scores. They throw some depth goal scoring in our face. 14 minutes in the second period. And we are now down once again by one goal. Giving them another power play. Tolvin in scores right after it is done. Power play time for the Leafs. We can't get it. Another one. Yeah, we deserve to lose. Anderson just getting in on the party. What a joke. You are a joke, Toronto. Five on three and we can't score. I don't believe what I'm seeing. Hold on. Hold the phone. Lindell clutching up here. No. What are you going to do? Very unfortunate first round exit. It's going to happen. By the way, I'll let you guys make the jokes. I'm going to bow out on this one. I assume you know what I'm talking about. Oh yeah? Fill the thrill, point a game in the playoffs. He went up to 84 overall. Guy loves the Leafs. Stone was also point a game, Perron was point a game. We did get points. Was it Hart that struggled? Yeah. Like, big time. You know what, Kata? We're done. I don't think I've drafted you once, and it's worked out. So, I think we should both go our separate ways, and it's better for everybody. But Brovsky with a 917. 267. Varlamov had a 922. So Carolina won the President's Trophy and they almost won the Stanley Cup. Devin Taves led defenseman, 16 points in 23 games. Falk up 15 in just 19 games. And your Conn Smythe winner, Leon Dreisaitl. 10 goals, 20 assists for 30 points in 23 playoff games. Goudreau's up there with 24. Debrinkat's up there with 24. But it is absolutely this man getting that trophy. So Vancouver with the Stanley Cup, the Jerks get the President's Trophy, and then it was those two in the finals. Individually, we already knew that. He gets the Art Heart combo, a tale as old as time. EK65 with the Norris, did have over point a game, so yeah. Lady Bang goes to Clayton Keller. Reichel with the Calder, that's a new one. Leon did get the Conn Smythe. Ranta would take home the Vesna, and Kemper would get the Jennings. It's kind of funny. The old Arizona Coyotes duo. Mayfield grabs the Masterton. Paradis gets the Jack Adams. I tried. Watch it just be like, oh, actually that's Paradis or Paradis. It could be. I don't see any accents. Do they have in this game? I think they do. Sydney the Kidney gets the Selkie and the Lindsay. And as we saw, Pasta with the Rocket Richard. This guy just scores goals. He does. Your playoff tree. Pretty boring Stanley Cup final, 4-1 win. I guess that's pretty similar to the real-life Stanley Cup final that just recently passed. We lost in seven only for Montreal to get dusted by the Tampa Bay Lightning in round two. You win some, you lose some. Well, shout out to my friend for putting that together. Really appreciate it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. I think that NHL 23 content is coming to an end here. NHL 24, right around the corner at this point. So... Yeah, you're probably not going to be seeing too much more NHL 23 videos, but you will be seeing some NHL 24 be a pro. I'm excited for that as well. So I appreciate you guys as always. Thanks for tuning in. I will see you soon.